Hello and welcome back everybody. So in the previous video we have learned about empirical distributions and in this video we will consider what happens to these distributions when we plug in the data we have for a bootstrap estimate. And that's the main difference between bootstrap estimation and Monte Carlo estimation. In Monte Carlo estimation we generated our samples ourselves Whereas here we are given data which we consider to be a sample of independent observations of X. So let's see what happens when we plug these into our empirical distribution. So in our situation the observed data is assumed to be random. So we have X1 up to capital XM. If you're not used to this that sounds a bit absurd but that is a pretty standard assumption so that is for example in the case of measurement error or some things where you take more than one measurement because the first one doesn't give a definite answer, that is the right thing to do. You assume you measured the same thing m times, you get m different values, and you assume there is some true, whatever you measure, length, height, voltage or so, and you are seeing noisy observations of this. So that would be one thing. Or maybe you are doing an opinion poll and you want to I don't know, get the average voting intention or something. And you can't see everybody, so you can't really take the average. But instead, you pick people at random and ask them of the opinion. And then X1 up to XM would be the opinions of randomly chosen people. And again, because they are randomly chosen, these would again be random. So that is really the setup. So we assume we have M random values. And here in, in this section, we assume they are actually IID copies of X. And we have seen one instance of them. So we have M numbers in our spreadsheet or somewhere. But they are one realization of this M independent copies of X. And then what we are going to do is we are still looking at our data and picking one at random. So we take the empirical distribution P star capital X, capital X is this one, so the notation is a bit funny here, this capital X, if I'm pedantic, I should have written P star X1 up to XM, because capital X is already the random variable we started with, but I just write capital X here anyway, because it's easier to write, that stands for these M IID copies of X we have. So what we have then is X star is capital X, okay? The logic being I take my data and then I use this capital K to pick one of them. Only now the data are the capital X, the random variables I have, so I get capital X K. So I take the case of the random variables and K is random and then we are in the bit strange situation that both X and K are random. So if we are going to work out the expectation or the variance of this, we need to be very careful because both the randomness in X and the randomness in K will contribute to the variance. That is the technical complication we have to learn how to deal with in this section. Okay, so we need some special notation for that. If I write P star with the X here and expectation with the star and an X here, these two symbols denote the probability and expectation where capital X1 up to capital XM are assumed to be fixed. So technically that is the conditional expectation given the values of X. And this special expectation and the special probability, the answer will always depend on these capital X and because the capital X are random, the answer will still be random. So let me just do an example. So it is just new notation, that is really the rule we have just learned. So earlier we learned for any data how do we work out the probability that x star is equal to a for fixed data. Now I write this p star x, which means we are taking the probability and assume the x are fixed. So we can use the rule we learned here, which was for fixed data. So I can write this, only I need to write capital Xi. So what I get is simply 1 over m, some i from 1 to m, indicate a function of a of capital Xi. So that thing is still random, and only for working out this probability we temporarily assume the x are given, 
and then we write the answer in terms of this given x. And continuing with the notation, if we want to take out both kinds of randomness, then we write just p and e as before. So these two denote the usual probability and expectation. So with star it's conditioned on the values of x, the answer will depend on the values of x. Without star it is the usual probability and expectation, which means the answer is no longer random, the answer will be just a number in both cases. Let me do some easy first steps. So if we do this expectation with the star of f of x star for example, then again we are in the situation as before. Here we assume x is fixed, so we can use the old rule and we get just 1 over m sum i from 1 to m f of xi, but now we need to write capital xi here. That's the random because the x, the capital xi are random. In contrast, the usual expectation of f of x star, we don't know yet what that is, but that will need to be a number, so that cannot depend on the xi here. That can depend on the expectation of the xi or something like this, but it cannot be random. Okay, let's just work this out. So what do we need to do? What we can do is there's something called the tower probability of conditional expectations, which says you can take the expectation in steps. So you can take out first some of the randomness and then take out the rest. And that is the same as if you do it all in one go. So here that expectation took the x as fixed. So this took out only the randomness coming from the k, the one which helps us pick one of the x. Then we just saw here the answer is still random, but we can take out the remaining randomness here. And by the tower property of conditional expectations, what we get is the just usual full expectation with all randomness taken out. So if we use this rule, then we can do expectation of the conditional expectation we have just worked out. 1 over m sum i from 1 to m f of xi. And this looks familiar. We have worked out very similar expectations when we learned about Monte Carlo estimates, but let's just do that again. So it's 1 over m sum i from 1 to m expectation of f of xi. And this equals expectation of f of x, since the xi were iid copies of x, though so that is 1 over m sum i from 1 to m expectation f of x, and then average of a constant is just the constant itself, so it's expectation f of x. So this was easy enough. The full expectation of f of x star equals the expectation of f of x, and the conditional expectation given x equals the sample mean of the f of x i. I will also show you what happens to the variance, and that's a bit more complicated, so I make that a lemma. The result I'm going to show you is the variance of, let's just say, x star and leave out the f. We can always replace x star with f of x star in the end. So that variance equals the expectation of the conditional variance of x star plus the variance of the conditional expectation of x star. So here the two notations mix, so that is the usual variance of x star. That is made up of two terms, so that's a new formula, which chances are you may not have seen before. And one of the terms here is the conditional expectation of x star, that's what we had here. And as we know that is still random because it contains the xi, it's conditioned on xi. And we take the variance of this randomness. And the other term is the opposite. That's an expectation of a conditional variance. So that symbol means what we computed once earlier. That is the conditional expectation given x of x star squared minus the conditional expectation of x star and then the result squared. So that is the conditional variance of x star given the value of x. And since both of these terms still depend on x, they are random, and here that is the expected value of them. So this is the formula how we can get the variance of x star made up from these condition quantities. Expectation of the conditional variance and variance of the conditional expectation. So let me just run you through the proof of this. So I just wrote the definition 
of the variance, we can use the same definition for variance of x star. So that is expectation of x star squared minus expectation of x star and that thing squared. Then the next step is to use the tower property we had discussed earlier. This says this expectation we can do in two steps. We can first take the expectation conditioned on x and then the usual expectation. We can write that as expectation of the conditional expectation of x star squared. So that is the tower property. We can take the expectation in two steps and we get the same result as if we do it just in one go. And using the same tower property, we can get here expectation of the conditional expectation of x star and then the result squared. Good. Now I use one of these tricks where you add and subtract a term. And you see the difference between these two terms is here the square is on the inside and here the square is on the outside. And the term we will add and subtract is the one which has the square in the middle. So let me just add in the new terms. So I subtract expectation of conditional expectation of x star squared. That term we didn't have before. The square is on the middle level. And to make it all true again, I need to add this again. So expectation, conditional expectation of x star squared. So the blue terms cancel, so I haven't changed anything. Now, before we go on, let me just copy that onto a new page. So that's the term we had. And in the first term, I can combine the outer expectations. So I can write the expectation because there is an expectation here and here. And then I just use the fact expectation of a minus expectation of b is expectation of a minus b. So in this case, the conditional expectation of x star squared minus the conditional expectation of x star and the result squared. So that is the two expectations in the first row combined. Now in the second row, we see this term and this term occurs as a random quantity in both expectations. And in the first term, we have expectation of this term squared. And in the second expression, we have expectation of this term and then the result squared. And that we know is the variance. So what we get here is that the variance of this random term and the random term is the conditional expectation of x star. And with this, we are nearly there. Namely, the last thing to combine is these two terms. And that is now straightforward. So it's an expectation of x star squared minus the expectation of x star squared. So that will be the variance of x star. And since the expectations are conditional expectations conditioned on x, we will get the conditional variance of x star. So what we get is we get the expectation of the conditional variance of x star minus the variance of the conditional expectation of x star. And this was what I set out to prove. So this last step completes the proof. Good. Now there is this one thing I only mentioned so far in the proof. I just wrote x star to simplify notation. And if you follow the proof, you will have noticed nothing ever happens with the x star. I just carried it from line to line. And the full result does have an f in here. So let me just copy that again. What we can prove using exactly the same steps is the variance of f of x is equal to the variance of the conditional expectation of f of x plus the expectation of the conditional variance of f of x. And this is the result which in the book you can find as lemma 5.9. That finishes the theoretical discussion of the empirical distribution. So what we have learned now is we have learned what is the empirical distribution. Then I considered the situation which we are going to use here where we take the empirical distribution but with random data. And then I told you a bit about the different ways you can take expectations and probabilities. You can either condition on the data or you can take the unconditioned quantities. And that is how you express the full variance in terms of the conditioned quantities. So with this in place, in the next video, we will finally be able to say what is a bootstrap estimate. So see you in the next video.